Today, we're going to take a look at this form recognizer service from Microsoft. And this service is in Azure. You can see currently it's in preview mode. If you want to get access to it, you click this contact us button and you'll have to fill out a form which has your use case, describes some of the uh, processes that you're trying to uh, implement on this service and you submit it and then they have to approve it. Okay. Uh, my approval got turned around in one day, uh, but uh, depending on how much volume they're getting, it could take you longer. Right. Uh, once you get approved, you'll get an email with instructions to go download uh, the software that you need to run it, some pieces of it locally, um, and then also links to set up the service in your Azure uh, resource groups. OK, so if we take a look at this real quick, what's interesting about the service is that it's not just OCR. Um, it's actually one level above OCR. Right. So OCR is just the extraction of text. But what this service can do is assign some meaning to the text that you're extracting. Um, so you can see here, it can extract data from this form. Uh, they have some examples here. Uh, perhaps what's the most, most interesting example is this receipt, which is clearly you know, a picture taken from a phone. You can see even the shadow here, it's crumpled up, uh, but it's able to extract that text, which is, to me, it's pretty impressive, right? Um, and you can see it's got all this metadata in JSON that's available as well you know, when you're interacting with this through the API, okay? So today we're gonna walk through some examples of how to use this. You know, of course, it's still in preview. Um, the documentation is really good uh, with one caveat, just keep this in mind, is that when you're setting this up, you must set up your resources in US West or US West 2 or Western Europe, okay? If you set up your resources in any other regions like US East, um, your API calls are gonna fail because you're gonna get a 404 it seems like the version two of this preview hasn't been deployed to those regions yet. So if you get a 404 when you're trying to use the service and training the model, um, you know, switch it over to a different region. OK, so you can just delete the resources in east or whatever and then create new resources in west. Mine is in west, too. OK, um, so let's take a look at how this works. OK, so. When you get the instructions, it's gonna send you to either download the Docker image for this form labeler, or if you want to, you know, if you're a masochist, you can also do it manually and basically create the JSON files that are going to define uh, where your text regions are that you're interested in um, manually. Okay, and that's uh, not a fun process from what I've seen, but it's basically what this tool is going to do. Uh, when you run this tool, it's going to generate for any given input file, you're going to end up with a labels file and a OCR file. Okay, the OCR file is like, like we talked about is, you know, it's that first level text extraction. And then this labels file builds on top of that and says, hey, what's this text? What does it actually mean? OK, so I've already done some of it. Obviously, we're going to take a look at two projects we have here, one set of files in PDF and one set of files in JPEG. Um, and there's definitely a, a difference in how the system is processing JPEGs and PDFs. Um, so we'll see what we can pick up. OK, so when you set up, you're going to set up a project in here and that project, you're basically more or less connecting uh your azure storage to the service right so you would set up a connection to your azure storage and then to your service and then this tool kind of brings it together okay um, i'm not going to go too deeply into the uh into the specifics all right so here we have a file that we haven't labeled yet okay and you know you can see here i already have the labels set up uh, but these are just arbitrary labels which represent areas of interest on your form. So, for example, if uh, let's say this piece of the form was important, we could add a new tag, right? And we could say this is the form name, right? And now that we have this form name, we click on this region here, and you can see it's got this number next to it. We can either click this or we hit the uh, corresponding key on our keyboard. So, I'm going to just hit eight on my keyboard, and you can see it picked this up, right? So now it knows that this is the name of the form, okay? So we're gonna go through and tag the rest of this, right? So here we have a country. You can see our OCR did not pick up this number six, right? So we're gonna tag this one with the month, the year, our drug, our route of administration, and our, uh, let's see here, and our date received, right? And you can see I can select multiple blocks of text. In this case, I have three blocks of text. Um, and once I select three blocks, 
I can label it in one go. And it didn't pick up the slashes in between, but it got the values correct, okay? And that's pretty impressive, especially given that this is a very low quality 100 DPI uh, PDF form, right? So this is not a very high quality scan. This is a very low quality scan. Uh, I have another one down here. And this one's a 200 DPI scan with a medium quality uh, compression level, okay? So we're gonna go through the same exercise. So this is our form name. This is our country. This is our date of birth. We don't have a month. It didn't pick up this one. This is our year, our drug, our route, and our date received. Okay, and you can see it got this date completely wrong. Uh, it has no understanding that this is a date and how we should parse it, uh, but it doesn't matter. We'll talk about talk about this a little bit later. Okay, so. You know, because we added this new new field here, we can come back to the other ones that I haven't tagged before, and we're just going to tag these real quick and move through all of these. All right. All right, perfect. Now, once you have your all of your forms uh, tagged, then you go to train your model. Okay, so you can see I already trained this model once. I'm gonna train it again because I've updated my model, okay? And once you train it, you're basically sending off the original files with the JSON uh, files to, uh, to the machine learning algorithm that's going to basically generate a model which we can use to process and predict uh, incoming files and extract that information, okay? And once we, once we perform our training, we get back an estimated accuracy. You can see this completed. We get back an estimated accuracy of you know, how well the model will extract this information. And you can tune this you know, based on your accuracy needs by just training more documents, right? So if you want a higher level of accuracy, what you'll want is you'll want a larger sample set, maybe 40, 50, or 100 documents. In this case, we're just using 10 documents. So it's gonna be really difficult to achieve really high levels of accuracy, okay? So now that we have our model trained, what we can do is we can upload uh, documents that are novel to the system and see how the system handles it okay so we've trained it on these first three but it has never seen these other four low quality scans right so let's pick one let's try this number six okay so this number six is a low quality scan um, let's let's run our prediction on it and see what happens All right, so we got a result back. We got our country, Germany. We got our uh, DOB year. So you can see this is in the completely wrong place. Uh, we didn't pick up any of our actual dates next to our country. We got our drug, but it interpreted this last value as a slash. Uh, we got our route of administration, which is injection, and our date received correct. And of course, our form name is is spot on, right? So. Let's talk about how you would handle this result set, right? Obviously, this is there's a lot of incorrect data here, but you can see you have this confidence level here, which determines, you know, gives you one data input on whether you should accept the result or not. And you can see this is this is an exceedingly low uh, confidence level here because uh, it's in the totally wrong place. So we would probably want to discard this result and say, hey, you, you have to review these values, right? Uh, on the other hand, you know. Let, let's look at another example. Let's let's look at here, for example. We have 88.2, which is a pretty high confidence level, right? Uh, but at the same time, this is obviously the wrong extraction of this value, okay? So what's important to understand is that this value represents a confidence level of the extraction, not necessarily of the OCR, okay? Uh, what this is representing is a OCR, um, you know, OCR inaccuracy, whereas this is a extraction. Uh, accuracy. Okay, so our OCR interpreted this as a slash, but this is really an L, right? Now, how would you handle this in a real production system? What you would probably want to do is, if you know 
the known values for this field, you'd probably want to reject this result uh, because this is not going to match something in your data dictionary. Likewise, we're going to take a look at some of the other instances here. If you can't parse this as a date and you know that this is a date, you know, you're probably going to want to reject the result and send it through a manual re review process, right? So let's try another file, right? So this is a low quality scan. Uh, let's try, this is 06, let's try 04, okay? And this time we have it completely upside down. This is an inverted file. Let's see how the system behaves, okay? And this is a larger file. This is about three times the size. This is at 200 dpi and medium quality. Uh, so it could take a little bit longer for this file to process. All right, we got our results back. Look at that. This is pretty impressive. We got our country as Mexico, right? Our date of birth is uh, S. That's really a five. But again, it doesn't know the semantics that this should be a number. Um, DOB month is a nine, which is correct. And very interesting that the uh, confidence level is so low here. And DOB year, 74, correct? We got the correct drug, Inovomine injection uh 2022 so and forms name right so this is a completely the orientation is completely flipped and you can see there's a little bit of an angle to it even and we were able to extract the values from this form uh, so that's pretty impressive and if we were to download this json file uh, what you would see is that this json file actually has a value for the orientation it gives you the, the degree of orientation so this is flipped 180 degrees, and it would tell you that, okay? Uh, let's see what else we have in here, okay? So we have one that's also scan offset, right? So I think definitely if it can handle, you know, if it can handle a completely upside down form, um, it should be able to handle this one, right? And you can see here, this one's an interesting one. This one was written by my eight-year-old, so the handwriting is not great. Um, you can see it, we have this uh, semi-quasi-A here. Uh, let's see what happens, okay? Okay, so we got our country, which is really impressive that it extracted this as a A, right? We got our month, we got our year. We don't have our, we don't have our day, right? It didn't find a day at all, right? We have our drug, we have our route, we have the received date as well, and the form name, okay? So this is actually pretty impressive. You know, the, the, the only problem here is that, it, again, it missed one of the fields up here. And I think this is something that's actually not that hard to remedy, right? What we would need to do is, again, provide more training data uh, so that the recognizer service knows where to look for this information, right? All right, so this is, you know, with the handling of the PDFs, what, you know, next what we want to take a look at is how it handles images, okay? So if we come back here, we have a, another, uh, another project here. This is the same project, but in JPEG, okay? And once again, uh, you know, what's interesting here is we have some images of varying quality and varying sources, right? So I've already tagged a bunch of these. I'm going to come in and tag uh, tag this one first. So this one is a high quality scan uh, from my scanner, right? And let's see, we'll tag this one, country. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Let's look at this one. This one is one taken from my phone. And you can see I tried to take this straight on. The lighting is not great. There's a shadow down here. Uh, and it's not a very, very new phone. It's a really old LG G6. So it's not terribly good photo quality. Uh, but let's see what we can get here. OK, got one. And look at that. It picked it out as Japan. Two. You can see here we're missing our, we're missing our month field. OK, so we just go to four, five six and i want to grab these as seven okay and, and once again you know the form recognizer has no idea that this should be a date right so you're going to have to handle this at the application level and say hey wait a second uh even if this confidence level of the extraction is very high i know i should be getting a date here and i can't parse this as a date so i have to send this for human review right uh and let's take a look final example 
this is an angled view. Okay, one, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, so you can see once again, we've missed some of the fields, right? So we don't have the day uh, and we missed this part of the receive date. Okay, but again, that's okay. What, what we're really trying to do here is we're really trying to train the model. And what we want to see is what happens once we train the model and feed, you know, novel documents into that model. Okay, so let's start it here. Okay, so you can see I have trained this model, uh, but we're just adding additional training data into the model at this point. Um, see if we get uh, see if we get better results with this updated model. Okay. All right, so our model didn't change significantly. We're still at about the same accuracy and the same estimated accuracy. Uh, obviously, that's because the documents aren't that different uh, from what we had previously. They're all very similar documents. Uh, but let's see how it handles some of the different scenarios we have with our JPEGs, right? So with our JPEGs, we have a couple of more interesting scenarios. Uh, we have, uh, let's take a look at this one. Let's take a look at just passing a normal document first, right? So we have this one that we haven't seen in our training data set yet. Uh, which is kind of this the straight on photo with a little bit of an angle, right? All right, so we ran our prediction over this. You can see we have we picked out Germany, we picked out the date of birth. You know, this one again, it picked out an S just like we did with the PDF. It picked out our our DOB year. It picked out our drug and our route of route of administration is injection and our date received. So this is really good, given that this is taken at an angle, right? Let's take a look at something a, a little bit more extreme. Okay, so let's take a look at this, right? We're gonna give it a document that it hasn't seen at all once again, uh, which is this. Let's pick one from the side, right? So this this picture has been taken from kind of the side and also at a bit of an angle, right? So you can see the orientation of the image is completely different. We're taking the picture at an angle. Uh, we've got this uh, kind of uh, half uh, cursive and half print here. Uh, let's see how it does, okay? All right, beautiful. That's really amazing. It picked out the country correctly. We got our date of birth, right? We're again, we're missing our month and year. Uh, our DOB year, this one is uh, completely in the wrong place, but our confidence is also really low. We got our drug and we got our route, and you can see it picked up this little of here um, in our value, um, and our date received is correct, right? So what this is telling me is that you know when we go to build our model, we probably have to focus more on this area, uh, have more examples of the DOB um, month and the year and the day, and also probably focus in on this one as well and see if we can get more examples, uh, you know, to make sure we kind of try to cut off and exclude this of, uh, preventing it from getting pulled in, right? Let's take a look at another another example. Let's take another one. I really like this one. So let's see. Uh, let's try another photo from the side. We're going to drop in number, how about number two here? Okay, let's just take a look at this one. So number two, predict. All right, so that's okay, right? So we got our country correctly. Uh, we got our DOB date and we got our drug and our route. The route, again, we picked up this of here, which is incorrect. Um, and as we talked about before, you know, this date, this date received value, we know that this is incorrect. Uh, so what we need is a way to process this, um, you know, so that we know that we should reject this result um, and send this for a human review. But you can see, once again, we missed our month and our year. It's not even in here. And, you know, again, if you want to correct that, what you're going to want to do is go and put more data into your model, right? Into your training model. So you have more samples for the model to work from. Uh, and let's let's just take a look at one more. Okay, just for just for fun here. We want our we want another JPEG. Uh, let's try one that has been scanned. Okay. So this one, 
Um, this one's going to be much higher quality. Let's take number five here. All right, so this is a pretty high quality uh, scan. Uh, let's see if the model does any better with a higher quality input, right? All right, so this time it did really well, really well. So we got our got our country, we got our day, we got our month, and we got our year. We got our drug, we also got our route, and the date received. The date received, the format is not correct, but the values are correct, right? So this is this is pretty impressive. Uh, you know, if you have a really high quality input like this, this is a 200 DPI JPEG, um, not even the highest quality level. Uh, we're getting really good results. You know, this is 100% confidence level uh, across the board. And once again, you have to understand that this is a confidence level of the extraction. This is not the confidence level of the OCR, okay? All right, so that's it for this service. Uh, you know, you can see this service is still kind of in its early phases, um, you know, from Microsoft. If you're using AWS, there's a similar service called Textract. Uh, that performs similar cap that has similar capabilities, performs a similar function, um, you know, and which one you use is going to depend on, you know, the level of maturity you need and then also which ecosystem you're plugged into. I think the pricing is not going to be that different. And depending on the accuracy you need, if one is better than the other, you're definitely going to want to go with whichever has the better accuracy, even if the cost is marginally higher, right? So we might take a look at Textract in a future uh, future session, uh, but uh, really impressed with the form recognizer, and you can do some really interesting things with this uh, once you have a large enough training data set, okay?